Hi, what's up? In the name of Christ, it's Cran K. Today is Wednesday and I'm like, okay, whatever. I really do want to work out later, but one, I'm lazy, but that's never really been the issue. Um, Cause every day I get up and I do what I need to do anyway. Two, I'm under attack. Again, never really the issue. Cause I do what I need to do every single day anyway, whether or not I'm under attack. But three, it's raining. That's not always the issue. I would not under normal circumstances not work out because it's raining but given that I work out outside it's made life a little bit taxing. I don't want to exercise in here squeeze my body in a little corner and feel like trash. So we'll see what we do. If I don't exercise I suppose we're just gonna have to swallow the sorrow um, and deal and then make up for lost time when the weather recovers. When is that lost time? On the weekend? I don't know on Sunday whatever. I feel as if though I'm not losing weight fast enough though. It's all this caloric deficit suggestion, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. I really don't. I'll cut out some fruit out of my diet. Maybe instead of like four servings of fruit, I'll have to see how that works. Because I really do want to get skinny, but yeah, that was an icebreaker. Because what I'm about to talk about right now is deep, hard knock, extreme, and poverty stricken, albeit coming from a person that's wealthy in heaven. But people actually be thinking I got issues. Um, guys, I'm not sad, I should be. But frankly, for me, it's like good riddance. Somebody in my family is about to die. <coughs> I thought, <coughs> whoopsie, Ooh, my throat is like so scratchy. I guess that's what happens when demons are trying to suffocate you. You cough it out. Yeah, no, someone in my family is about to die. I thought it was going to be my cousin, uh, my aunt's kid. Well, yeah, like the boy, the, the little devil worshiper uh, that's been wreaking havoc in the family's life because he's like the most prolific Satanist. And the other day I had a dream of him uh, trying to marry me off to some rando. But the Lord God Almighty has made it kind of clear that no, it's not him. It's my cousin, yet another cousin, some female. Y'all, you know, and um, do you with your occult magic, your little wands and stuff that you keep on waving in the sky, do you? Um, until like it catches up and kills a person. We've seen, you know, the devil is intense like that, but you guys play around with him. Like, giddy cricket, you got New Year's Eve, so, jagahale twansa twansa twansa. Understand you had it coming. I used to love this cousin, now I literally don't care. At this point, it's a Hunger Games arena, and that's just the uncomfortable thing about being in the Hunger Games. It's kill or be killed, or it's uh, be the last one to survive, and my Hunger Games strategy, oh, my, my, my nail. I don't have a phone anymore to record on, guys, except this one. So really and truly, if you feel like the picture quality is lackluster, whips, I did it again. Anyway, whatever, it's all right. It's okay, I put on a light at the back there to make life a little bit easier. I'm not really sure if it's working. But if it is, rah, rah, congratulations. We prosper to do something. Listen, Amp. Uh, okay, all of y'all that like to play Gas Satan and Garakidi Cricket is a New Year's. Uh, no one understand that sometimes stuff comes like back at your booyah without you really signing up for it. Um, when you're busy exacerbating an ecosystem without really knowing that that's what's going on, next thing you're going to find yourself in the abyss. Allow me to help you understand the scripture that is written that you reap what you sow. Oh, yeah, that's a drum roll. Yet another drum roll. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap eternal life. I mean, guys, like, look at my acne. I shouldn't have switched that light on. It's just made life so much worse. But it's okay. We'll deal. Uh, it's more like hyperpigmentation and acne. Just a combo. Mm, cousin, look, I got your skin. Yeah, my cousin was the one with skin like this when you were growing up. I was never the one with skin issues. Now I have a skin issue. Uh, and that's that brings me to the topic of this particular issue that I'm about to wrap on about. Am I unemotional concerning this matter entirely? Okay, entirely. People have put us all in the Hunger Games arena. So in the Hunger Games, name witchcraft like puts people in the hunger games arena including christians but sorry for you the christian will always win oh so very naive over there in the occult thinking that you can dabble with the satan like it's the cricket it's a new year's eve and just like not die eventually the bible says the wages of sin is death amen 
and like that's what's gonna come at you in your in your, in your back door knocking knocking on your door trying to kiss you like it's mistletoe Lee Sue and I can die I literally don't care it's literally one more person that I will not have to deal with I don't care y'all need to get I used to love this woman we were the tightest pairing in the family and she's about to die and I will not wince neither will I ever under heaven attend such a funeral is that I'm just gonna get told she's died and just the way that I reacted with my dad's death I'm gonna be like I guess people die it's life moving on ain't nobody gonna convince me to go to no such funeral as those cuz let the dead bury their dead as for me I'm gonna go on right ahead and serve the Lord everybody else that's groveling around on the floor eating mud crying because someone died it's like have you any clue who you're crying over it's good riddance frankly the family is better off without her because you over there would have died if i didn't stand in the gap for you so too would you so keep quiet stop crying because it would be you in that grave if god did not take her it's that basic rando be out here dying and i'm gonna breathe a sigh of relief because i'm tired of standing in the gap for some family members because she's trying to sacrifice them that's what's good so let's just get into this hunger games arena <laughs> Oh, wow, my throat, right? This cousin is about to join the American dude. They're finally going to get to meet. Right now, the distance is intense. We used to be so close that any guy that I dated, I would have introduced him to her. And since I was at some point engaged to this animal in America, I didn't really get to introduce my man at the time to her, but they're going to have like a nice little cordial, uh, you know, uh, sort of kind of meeting of, of, of two peoples in hell they're about to meet literally in the judgment because they're gonna pass away more or less at the same time the only thing that can block their death is repentance which neither is going to do so i guess they're gonna finally get to meet and the dude is gonna be like oh who'd have thunk it i never thought i would have ever met any of karabo's family because like you know i was all forceful but it's nice to meet you except guess what we're going to the place where the worm dieth not and in that place there is weeping and gnashing of teeth let's go back to talking about the hunger games arena in question guys if i'm looking up above it's only because oh my goodness my throat is so scratchy it's only because i'm doing edits so i do apologize yeah if, if i'm looking somewhere different i shouldn't be but i am anyway mm. in the hunger games one of the two so there is this um i think the second one is it called catching fire i think it's called catching fire they compete a whole bunch of hunger games content contestants that have already won the hunger games so it's literally very unfair they're trying to come up against katniss because she's raising awareness and there's like a whole revolution going on because of her winning with peter in the first hunger games the, their whole rebellion and saying we're gonna die together caused a revolution okay and so now they want to kill katniss and the best way to kill katniss is by saying oh we've got another version of the hunger games we're gonna put people that have already won the hunger games and we're not supposed to go back in the arena in the arena it's a change of rules so now all the champions of the hunger games gotta know compete against each other totally ridiculous entirely ridiculous but there is this like one particular lady person that won the hunger games uh that is that is put in the arena with everybody else um because she won the hunger games of her particular season all right and this chick's strategy was just to like hide mm. all she did was hide all throughout the games she just concealed herself in locations moved from place to place and hid until every last person in the arena was dead and that's how she won so she did not have to lay a single finger on anybody she didn't have to kill a single person she didn't have to do anything shoddy and underhanded all she had to do was hide and then everybody passed away then boom 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 yeah congratulations lady from district seven one Woo! and it's like a whole celebration 
except everybody died. No blood on her hands, not even a single drop. Did not have to sneeze even an inch to win. She just had to hide. Wow. Ever since being entered by force into the second version of the Hunger Games. As if though I have not been winning them for 12 years in a row. Mm. This unfair arena that I have been put in, it's raining so it's going to be loud all over the show. But we're going to try and conquer. This unfair arena that I've been put in for like literally the 20th time is now asking me to compete again and again and again and again against guess who? The exact same people I've been with competing all this time. I've been winning. I've been conquering. I've already displayed that the odds are literally ever in my favor given that I'm a Christian Romans 828. But these unfair buffoons are playing dirty because I'm starting a revolution just like Katniss Everdeen and then I'm putting me in the arena again. Ever since I came into the faith, the Lord made it clear to me that he's gonna bury me deep in the earth. Long story short, he's gonna hide me. I told you, a wicked and a perverse generation seeks after a sign. That's what I've been rapping on about for a minute. On and on and on and on and on. Oh, on and on and on and on. Been going on on that loop. And how the Lord will not give them any such sign other than the sign of Jonah or the sun, the sign of the Son of Man. I don't eat just a disappearance. Yeah, so essentially a Christian being nowhere to found anymore in society. That totally happened to me. I wasn't happy about it. I wanted to thrive and live and have kids and do everything else that you guys are doing. But like you were like, I'm sorry, Karabi, you're going to disappear. So the Lord let them all cast their spells in the arena slapping the living daylights out of me and then he made it look as if though their spells worked amen he made it look as if though they took away my job they took away my husband they took away my children they took away my prospects they took away even my ministry he made it look like they won that was their sign i just disappeared that's what scared mm. and all these years i've been crying father oh father why did you make me disappear oh father i don't like disappearing i would much rather be in broad daylight i would much rather do a lovely thing but god was like i'm gonna hide you so i've been hidden for an entire almost decade it's been nine years mm -hmm. i've been unable to do anything with my life i haven't gone anywhere done anything although i've been trying very much to do much and go everywhere mm. every effort i embark on has just failed that's what's good so i appear super duper califragilistic expialidocious cursed do you understand i appear cursed mm. that is their strong delusion yeah and i was like lord why did you hide me he was like precisely because that's your agenda in the arena that is your strategy you're gonna win by making like that chick in the arena that they recompeted over again even though she won the original hunger games a season that she was in they're gonna play dirty but perpetually i'm just gonna hide you i'm just going to make it impossible for you to make money impossible for you to get seen impossible for you to get married impossible for you to have children impossible for you to work impossible for you to do anything you will have bare minimum of provision you you will eat, you will drink, you will poop, you will urinate, you will wake up and you will sleep and you will work out, but you will not be able to earn a living. You are going to live in absolute squalor and poverty and be underestimated and have witches believe that you have entirely failed at everything you do so that they will drop dead like dominoes on the ground. Mm. That's what's good. Yeah, and then at the end of it all, you're going to come out being the sole survivor. That's how you're going to win these Hunger Games. Yeah. The only thing that will stop this, like, crazy game called the Hunger Games is them making a decision, just like in Catching Fire, mm, to recognize that out there is the enemy, not Carabo. You're messing with the wrong person. So unless you want to be recompeted with a Christian that can not be defeated in the same arena and so after winning you then on the other side die anyway you're gonna bring down this arena just stop it you're gonna make like finnick and tell katniss hey hey remember the enemy is out there the enemy is out the enemy is usata 
man is in John Dewey. The enemy is the devil, you devil worshippers. And until you recognize who the real enemy is up in this monster, you're gonna die. Because God is gonna hide Christians. You're gonna die. You're gonna keep on shooting at the wrong person that you've been put in an arena with over and over and over again. And you are gonna be the ones that pass away. And Karaba won't bat an eyelid when you die. Now that we've put that out there, I have to speak on top of my voice because this rain is allowed on this corrugated iron roof that I live under because I'm in poverty, I'm in squalor, everything is shamelessly done to me, uh, albeit having a whole middle class family, that's what's good. And albeit having all the skill, this talent and unable nonetheless to make money, I'm in poverty, that's what's good. Mm. But you all are thinking that I'm the one here that is at a disadvantage. Let's just have a conversation. Um, let's discuss this thing further Let's have a conversation That is going to put some people in some places That they need to be put in I don't even known as their place You're gonna die You're gonna drop like dominoes And it is going to continue to happen On a loop Over and over and over again Until finally you realize That the enemy is out there And among the collateral damage deaths That are gonna happen in exchange for my life is a cousin of mine that I was very near and dear to. I thought that yesterday by ranting and raving the way that I did that the Lord might just spare her life. I also thought that maybe upon her hearing such a thing as that she might stop what she's doing. But the Lord God Almighty has given me some pretty goosebumpy, scary, shaky understanding concerning why under heaven she gotta go. Mm. It's her or me and she's gonna go. Listen to this. The Lord is hiding me. But I told you that the occult is going to kill itself. Christians only win the Hunger Games. Only reason we win is because we get it. We understand that the enemy is out there. That the devil, John 10.10, 10, has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ has come to give life and life abundantly. Therefore, we're not in the business of just driving knives into the hearts of people. Because, I don't know, it's a human sacrifice. And it's going to make me rich. Because he's the one that kills. Devil, that is. He's the one that destroys. Devil, that is. And he is the one that steals. Devil, that is. Therefore, when you recognize theft in your girl, instead of stealing stuff back, you wait on the Lord to recompense. Instead of killing a person back, you wait on the Lord to drop them like a domino. Instead of destroying an ecosystem, you wait on the Lord to do the destroying for you. That you might eventually inherit a life and a life abundantly. So we don't get our hands dirty, we just pray. That's what's good. But all of y'all out here in these streets be literally stealing like no man's business from everybody you are involved in the occult you struggle a little bit to get a job and then tomorrow you have bewitched a job a successful job interview out from underneath the feet of your best friend oh my goodness herein lies the you making like the devil and stealing yeah you're struggling to get ahead or get married or whatever so you go and pull the rock from under the feet of some unfortunate woman and steal her husband before he can propose marriage to her mm. all of your mistresses that are content for the life of you to sit around in the life of a married man and then you bewitch the living daylights out of this married man to leave his wife for you mm. look at you being the woman whose feet go down to death all of you girlfriends of guys that aren't proposing marriage to you fast enough. Now you want to fast track this bugaboo's proposal and then you go on right ahead because he's taken 10 years at Jolanawe to propose, to force him to propose when he was supposed to go and marry another lady because you guys didn't make sense together. Mm. Therein lies you stealing a husband and a man's joy in the future as if though he deserves it because he was busy fornicating with you anyway. Yeah. You make men marry you, you make bosses promote you instead of the person that deserves the job you take degrees from people by wearing them out in school so they drop out or sleep and are unable to study that they might fail and so get excluded from university you do all these strange things just so you can get your fill of the earth what you're doing on that day you animals okay is playing 
playing the Hunger Games. You are literally put in an arena where you've got your own will intact. All of your faculties are intact to choose not to play the game. You could make like all the contestants in the Hunger Games, yeah, we too, yeah, catching fire. Like all the pros or the winners of the past and say, guys, remember, the enemy is out there. The enemy is out there. So let's not kill each other. Let's try and bring down this arena. Because you don't get that. Because you don't understand stuff like that. You are out here playing these gangster hunger games. Stealing everything from everybody. Because the earth is the last place you imagine there is out there. You're competing for resources on a planet that is dead and dying. The god of it has offered you all the things of this world in exchange for your soul. That's what's good. And you have given them your soul and agreed to kill your cousin. You have given them your soul and agreed to kill your sister. You have given them your soul and have agreed to steal from your baby brother. All because you want to be successful because goodness is hard to struggle in this world. So frankly, I'm just going to go juice it by juicing all the giftedness of my family members. Until God Almighty kills you. Yeah, yeah, the one who is telling you the wages of playing the Hunger Games is death, you idiot. And if you play, you will die. You will reap what you have sowed. You will reap corruption. You will die at the very hands of the very dirt you are dabbling with. So stop in advance. Be given grace, oh fool, that you might embrace wisdom, oh idiot. And so be wise. And so be able to see. And so acquire eternal life. But no. Mm -mm. Not you. Not you. Not today. Not tomorrow. Oh no, never. You're still going to juice the earth. And then when somebody embarrasses you for playing the Hunger Games, you then want to finish them off. You then want to kill them. You then get frustrated so violently with Christians that now murder, she wrote. Murder, she wrote. Oh, murder, she wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you are just prepared to go and kill because you have played the Hunger Games for so long that finally when you get exposed, that's what's good. Now murder becomes the thing that you want to do. Or you keep trying to kill again a person that you failed to kill before. You compete with them over and over and over and over and over again in this Hunger Games arena. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's you over there. Mm -hmm. Even though they have already won and conquered you before. So, cousin Doe, I will not miss you. Not that you will be here to listen to this, but guess what? Every last video I have recorded warning you. Every last email I have sent warning you. Every last voice of reason that has come into your head through your conscience. Every time you have wondered if hell is real, guess what? From the flames of hell, all of those thoughts are going to be running in your mind. And all of my YouTube videos, thousands of them as there might be, will be playing in front of you over and over and over again. And you ain't going be able to get out and Carabo will not be batting an eyelid neither crying or throwing herself onto your casket as it is being lowered because she will think of you as one that was good riddance witches you are menaces to society do you understand la senior cousin do it look at my life this is what your witchcraft did laying a woman destitute making her unable to do anything at all at least that's what you think you did you thoroughly think that you made me a worthless woman that can go nowhere because you stole from me and you pulled the rock from under my feet because you are playing the freaking hunger games this is what you do to people and you're still carrying on a woman that you grew up closely to a girl cousin in the family we were tied so fast like this and you did this to my life and after observing this for 10 whole years you are still carrying on you are still carrying on after this level of absorbed destruction that you have caused in your family and mine mewaka hasa khona lwetsa anything in right dikana because she's always a puppet under the strings of your witchcraft and you still don't stop you still cannot stop after all this destruction literally ask yourself this how much worse can this possibly get how much worse can what happened to Karabo possibly get? How much more destruction that you cause in the cosmos with your demonic entities do you imagine you can possibly cause? How much lower can you go? Because it appears you're not done just yet. So granted that you're not done, God is going to make you finish, okay? Otofetz.
You are about to go to hell And this is the last message I am doing You idiot To warn you of this Or to have you basically listen to in hellfire Because I will never again speak To anything you're doing Because when you do pass away The reason why I'm even doing this video Is that your father, your mother And your two sisters Might watch this video And understand that your death was prophesied Before it happened And so likely believe Because at the end of the day I've been working as a little evangelist in the family trying to rescue their souls for heaven so if your death is what it will take for them to repent then I guess I might as well prophesy it in advance before it happens because you've been warned remember that dream that I had some years ago before I lost everything that you stole from underneath my feet you Jezebel you mm. where I sent you an email warning you that you have started to do some strange stuff stop now before it gets too big seize now before it gets too intense and you ignored me I even described the dream where I told you that I had a dream where there were a whole bunch of tiny little baby snakes in the environment where we were at and I was telling you to kill them before they grew up and became big fat chunky pythons and cobras and you ignored me in the dream and were irritated with me well guess what you're about to get eaten whole now by an anaconda that you grew from a baby because you thought you could keep a whole snake as a pet you thought you could keep the devil as a, as a pet and now you are about to indeed earn your wages of sin which is death you are about to die and when you die i will not bat an eyelid this here is an what do you call this thing it's an evangelistic video an apostolic video that i am doing for your family and for my family and for the rest of the extended family to watch after you've died so they can in tears sobbing after you have ceased to breathe repent i went to the lord and i begged them idiot to rescue your soul your sister your brother not your brother what's this your your bra your, your your father your mother my the, the aunties and the whatnots yeah I begged the Lord to rescue the family Save them for Jesus He has had mercy on them and given them life To breathe for now However so far there's been one person That has passed away and gone to hell An aunt And soon it's going to be you Who will have been among the youth That are going to pass away and go to hell The Lord has been merciful since I got saved To literally spare the lives of all the lost randos in the family The only one The first person to pass away Since I got saved Was born again Waco Pinville, the rest of y'all, you are lost. And you've been dying. You have not yet been dying. But another elderly woman passed away in the family, lost. And today she is in torment. And she is literally wondering how many of you guys else are going to join her because you did not listen to me. And the person that's passing away, and so since I can't save her I can at least prophesy her death so that when she dies and their family listens to me even though they will understand that there is nothing that pays the wages of sin is a death but the free gift of God is eternal life for them who are in Christ Jesus so hallelujah amen uh, let this be a warning as well to the rest of you in the occult since you stole everything of mine at least you think you stole everything of mine the exact same acquisition of things of mine that you have gotten from the occult you're also about to acquire what was supposed to be my death you are about to acquire what was supposed to be my death you are going to be buried where i was supposed to be buried you are going to be mourned on the day when i was supposed to be mourned your body is going to get discovered on the day when my body was supposed to get discovered because god is thoroughly going to take you out instead of me why because you want to weaken my christianity so you can finally successfully curse me to death because you don't want to lose your wait for it husband and daughter because the occult organization that you belong to is not demanding the blood of your husband and daughter mm. 
Mm. And rather than sacrifice them, they told you the only way you can save your husband and daughter is if you prosper to kill your cousin. And somebody has given you advice that the best way to kill this Christian cousin that's been the bane of the occult existence in South Africa mm, is to carry her away from Jesus Christ. If you can loose, lukewarm her up, if you can water down her Christianity, you will be able to curse her to death. So I keep getting nightmares about you, and I got nightmares night be last night. No, night before last, the night before then, and the night even before then. And I eventually spoke about all these nightmares. And even after speaking yesterday about your random rubbish, I then had yet another nightmare because you are apparently so dedicated to the prospect of weakening my resolve in Jesus Christ that you will stop at nothing to finish it off because you are now desperate to save your husband and daughter. Because if they don't, so if because if I don't die, they die. So now this is a trial by ordeal. You imagine you are at a dead end. And so this time around, God showed me how don't you are not going to let it go. You're going to be an itch in my hair because absent of you insisting on killing me, your husband and daughter dies. You are not even of the belief that I have power, Mina, as a Christian, to stand in the gap for your husband and daughter so the occult does not knock them out. So what's going to happen is that out of frustration of not being able to kill your daughter and your husband, the occult organization that you belong to is going to kill you. The secret society that you belong to, that engaged you in sex rituals that even gave you a disease, that you went on right ahead to even give to your husband. Mm. All of that wickedness that you did, it caught up with you early, uh, early enough for you to repent, and you haven't for years down the line. For a while you had left me alone, because you were doing your own thing, flying like a bird, cursing other people that are cursable. But now with this dilemma that you are facing, where your kid and your husband are about to die, you're now trying thoroughly to bereave my mom and my sisters that are sitting around gathering dust waiting for me also to die because they're under your spells and the spells of many other people. Unsuccessful. Overnight gained prosperity while Karabo fell at the same time. You thoroughly are trying to finish my family off. You want to finish us off. So all of y'all can carry on walking into the sunset and pretending nothing is wrong. Because she would be embarrassed. My mother would be embarrassed if I passed away because of her neglect of me. When you know that you made my mother that neglectful of me. And because she was used. She was easily used. She was a puppet on a string. And all these years down the line, and you want to finish my mom off. You want to bereave my mom to a point where she will pass away shortly after I die. And all that will be left is my older sister and my baby sister. And they will then be scattered from each other. And this whole family will be mowed to the ground. While you get to keep your family in a bunch. So God is like, no, because you are thoroughly trying to finish my family off. The soul that sins shall die. I belong to Jesus. Only Christian in the family standing in the gap for even your dad that you try to kill and your sister that you try to kill but did not succeed. He that has protected thy father of yours from going to hell and not doing his duty as a man in the family to protect Wonkumundu as a baton was handed down to him when the grandmother died. Even from you. But he was blinded by your witchcraft. And so for those reasons, I had to stand in the gap and protecting and saving a man that would have had to face God when the Lord told him you were given a job as the to your grandmother, my, your mother's legacy to protect the extended family. And you took the side of a daughter you know was evil from here to Timbuktu. Your father would have burned for your sins first. But instead, God gave him mercy. Why? Because I say, I now always learn everybody about Dawe. I say, I now always learn the entire extended family even in Latheche. Or Latheche is in Tatoa how Boko. You made your own dad lose his mind. And so, for those reasons, you gotta go, girl. You're you're the cancer in the family. You. Why now? Because now they do things go 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 no ya 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 ganti. And so the busy lawyer line can go all over the show. Lily too. You are some of the most destructive wishes in the family. However, die cousin, the Lord Oamutrochela for whatever reason I can't say because then he just needs to be mowed to the ground but I have a feeling it has everything to do with the fact that you feel like guilty and then 
ntsa sa re knock it down o tswile mo go zama long ago so o mo fa di chance that's what's good mara wena watswa you are about to die and this is so unfortunate because we were so tight you and i were so close but now it looks like your death is evangelistic it looks like your death has got an apostolic edge it appears as if though your perishing state might just save your dad your mom your sisters as well as the extended family because how ona motsotso mamelang video ena o qeta o tlhoka fal and not shake and not fear do you understand that god is coming for them next o lo tlhoka fal for one reason and one reason only to to ba to because how you the house of allah you're not going to down tools you are not going to down tools and in you refusing to down tools you are going to miserate me so much that i would go back again into suicide ideation given that i'm dealing with witchcraft from tweba yakwa america e sang tsebeng long tseba you and some cousin in south africa alongside random strangers that i don't even know i would be under too much attack and you would be focusing too much on me dedicating bodjo tleba gago through focusing the energy of a, another cult as if though i'm not already dealing with one coven in south africa you're going to bring another coven so eyes on my eyes i don't need your own the coven that you belong to the cult that you belong to you're going to dedicate their resources and their seances and everything that they do to look at me meaning that i'm going to have very uh, two very hard knock secret societies in this country looking at me you are going to bring more freemasons gawking at my case than i absolutely freaking need and for those reasons god is going to snuff you out and when the lord snuffs you out when the lord snuffs you out your occult organization is going to walk away from me it won't look at me it's going to focus on all the other christians that they're messing with because they belong to family members of their own cult members they're going to look at everything else in south africa and not me but right now you are literally drawing the attention of an entire cult a strong cult a free masonic cult in the country to look at me um chebisa ka cult ya gao and god will have nothing to do with it because i'm already dealing with the biggest secret society organization in south africa that is destroying the country as we know it and i don't have time for your amateur cult in comparison to the one that i'm dealing with yours is small but it is an insult to injury that i frankly cannot afford and so the lord before you focus the energies of your cult on me to a point of obsession with me until you were not personally cult member die even when you die they will still look at me cuz i'm so powerful before you even get to a point of convincing them to focus their energies on me you will die and they will walk away from me because i no longer have any business with them your death is precisely because of what under heaven it is that your continued existence means for me that very powerful secret society that you joined because no batla chelete o no batla kare ya khasnya hao no batla ho compete le karabo it's going to kill you when you fail to sacrifice your husband and your daughter and when my prayers stand in the gap for your husband and your daughter and so the death curses that they send on them anyway fail they're going to be upset with you and so kill you somebody's blood got to be spilled now and it's going to be yours and i'm not going to be able to stand in the gap of it because if i save you your cult is going to focus on me if i rescue you if your if the death spell on you does not work cuz i'm standing in the gap for you but long jeba and then na ke batlo loshaba ke di freemasons e dingwe i don't want to be looked at by other freemasons other than the ones that are already looking at me they're a big enough job on my own baba ta weng ba gender based violence ba ha wa ke ba ba ke ba ka nna ba tsamaya ba tsa the amateur thing placing ceos and jobs in south africa the one i'm dealing with is placing presidents in the presidential mansion of this country and i'm not trying to have one giving you little dumb promotions in your job also looking at me do you understand that's what's going on so your death i will not be able to prevent it because if you survive your demonic organization is going to be upset with whatever protected you from dying so now you're about to go to hell baga and when you get there kya ka tlhaloganya or the person that you are about to meet from the US was another bane of my existence that will have either preceded you or died shortly after you because you two are birds of a feather that belong in that place for having done the same things to one woman Lita wela kula lutubile matakwane the enemy is out there i warned you you were given so much grace you were given so much gospel you also in and of yourself by your conscience knew that this could condemn you but you kept on playing games and now you're going to hell the lord was going to give you a deathbed i told you yesterday 
The Lord was going to give you cancer, lung cancer. But because of Ntowe Gadileng, no. Because of what you're doing now and your now determination to rescue your daughter at my expense, at my expense, you're going to get a sudden death. I already prophesied that yesterday. You're going to get a sudden death. How it is that I'm going to win these Hunger Games is just disappearing. Now get towards where I'm at. I just sit back and the Lord is about to neutralize occult organizations in this country. He is about to kill them one by one and dropping them like dominoes through each other. Battle Bulayan. So just like this little idiot from America, he's going to get killed by other Satanists. Other devil worshippers are going to knock him out. In the same way that you're also going to get knocked out by other devil worshippers. Your occult organization is going to turn its face away from you. It's going to backstab you. There ain't no honor among thieves, bugger. I don't know why you did not see that coming. There's no honor among thieves. Devil worshippers ain't got no honor for each other. Not even Freemasons have honor for one another. As soon as somebody gets too embarrassing, too taboo, or if somebody fails at a ritual, if they can't succeed to achieve a goal that the occult gave them, death is their assignment. So now, your failure to sacrifice one now, and your failure to also then say instead of them sacrifice me a christian in your family is going to make them be like i'm sorry blood gotta be spilled somebody gotta take this place otherwise we're not going to continue to grow from strength to strength so you're going to be neutralized and none of them are going to bat an eyelid you're in last the deal you're one of those hard knock satanists right mm, that drink human blood and everything that have killed people you belong to that kind of hard knock serious secret society that's what's good so on the day you first drank blood you know how it seared your conscience enough for you to basically try to kill your dad and not bat an eyelid try to kill your cousin you try to come at me first yeah that failed and then you went for your dad that failed you went for your sister that failed and then you went outside of the family and they were like fine we'll take it that's what's good so i'm going to get up for this who in order to get to where you need to get but somebody had to die and thankfully it was no one in the family because of my prayers that's what's good the only reason you were able to do all that was because they did a ritual on you to sear your conscience but no matter how seared a person's conscience might be there are certain rituals that they get exhausted from doing and there are certain people that they're unprepared to lose and for you uh, the, the the achilles heel was discovered the thing that you were now happy to do when nobody else was able to do to basically get to you the one thing that you could not do sorry your achilles heel your weakness the thing that they could not get to was your immediate family it turns out especially by Navajo. so you couldn't care less your sister you couldn't care less Karabo, you couldn't care less but you have said there's something about your daughter and there's something about your husband that is just you know spurring up a conscience in you that has been otherwise seared by blood drinking and all these rituals that demonize you to a point where you cannot see what you're doing and that whole rock and the hard place that you are in now instead of turning to jesus you are thoroughly trying to go back to what, what is it 2013 2014 when did you join this now nah, it was not 2014 2013 more or less around there 2012 2013 mm, it was after i came to jesus christ that's what's good yeah you try to kill me then got a dream where you were on top of my body where they stay and you were literally trying to stab me to death while i was sleeping however i woke up in the middle of this inactivity saw you about to drive a knife into my heart and we wrestled each other wrestled 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 until i overpowered you and you fell off my body and then you walked away so you failed to kill me you failed to sacrifice me i was supposed to be your first human sacrifice in the same dream i went to my mom and your dad who were sitting in the dining room of the house and i was like hey malume wanna how just try to kill me your daughter just tried to kill me and both your dad and my mom in the dream ignored me lo and behold in waking life i warned them that you're trying to do something strange to my life and both of them ignored me you tried to sacrifice me but couldn't so all i could imagine is that a human sacrifice was done conducted in the occult where you likely tried to stab my image in a mirror and couldn't do it and then you gave up and then when I tried to raise the alarm concerning your insanity the family ignored me so
so that's how you got protected when you failed to do that human sacrifice you then went on right ahead to pull the rock from under my feet in other ways and not kill me because you could not kill me so you did a ritual where I, I woke I saw myself basically it was two sh a pair of shoes in front of Vitz Plus Vitz Plus the university I used to attend a pair of shoes called Vitz Plus that I was wearing the shoes of which were tied the shoelace thing and as I was trying to walk towards the Vitz Plus office I was a part time in, uh, student alongside a full time employee so every time I was headed towards Vitz Plus or that general region of this university it was because i was getting out of my car having driven there from work to go to a lecture and i was literally en route the same way but instead my shoes were tied I, my, my shoelaces were tied and so when i try to walk yeah that's what's good i tripped and i fell and god was like that's the ritual that this woman did long story short you are going to try and grab your career you're going to try and grab your education your academia and you're going to stumble and fall literally breaking your teeth and able to get both things lo and behold look at me today still have not graduated left with eerie this is creepy listen to this one module to graduate and yet i haven't gotten my degree and as i stand today have not been able to get a job since 2014 it is 2023 so it looks as if though your little ritual worked except i'm a child of god seated in heavenly places with christ jesus